What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Gearbox, and today we're just gonna look at a mechanism, it's kinda cool, it's called a Schmidt coupling, or a Schmid coupling, I don't know, I, last time I tried to pronounce a word, I got butchered for it, so I'm just not gonna try pronouncing words anymore, it's a, it's a coupling, it's pretty cool, it looks like this, uh, don't worry, we'll talk about that in a sec, but yeah, I was working on Gearbox, just sort of, you know, building other stuff, um, stuff like, like this mainly, is kind of stuff I've been working on, yeah... Yeah, we're gonna get to that. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I was working on other stuff in Gearbox, and generally I have sort of two ways to play games like Gearbox or Sandbox games in general. What One way is I'll sort of, you know, build on camera, and you guys have seen that a lot. And then the other way is I'll sort of build off camera, and generally I build off camera when I'm trying to figure stuff out for myself. And when I do that, I'll usually put on, like, a YouTube video or something on, on my other monitor so I can, you know, keep myself entertained while I try and just, like, tinker around with different things. And, uh, yeah, I've been working on this and, uh, sort of, you know, if we just look through my constructions, I got some sort of, you know, we're just not gonna, there's a lot of launchers, um, for reasons. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But, yeah, so I was, I was doing that and I was browsing YouTube and I guess YouTube recommended me this video about, um, useless machines in Legos. And, uh, yeah, so one of them was a Schmidt coupling, and I was like, well, that's not really a useless machine, that's kind of like the coolest machine ever. Uh, so this is a Schmidt coupling, and for those of you who don't know what that is, it's, uh, a, a basically a way of accommodating a, a, quote, large radial displacement between two shafts. So here we have our input motor, which spins this shaft, and by doing that we can spin this output shaft, and so if we actually put, uh, let's just put a, you know, a simple gear on it, just so we can see it visually. And if we press, you know, there we go, right? So as we rotate the motor, you can see it rotates this output shaft. And if we turn it in the other direction, right? And we're and we're doing that. We're like we're translating it across. You know, we we can we can actually let's let's paint this. I don't know why I didn't paint this. This would be a lot easier painted. But anyway, yeah, I was watching that Lego video and I was like, well, why the heck have I not built one of these in uh, in gear blocks? Because gear blocks lets us build stuff at really silly angles. So there we go. You see red, yellow, and we'll do a blue one as well. And there we go. And no matter what. So now what I want to do with this, just to prove what this coupling does. Right now I've got this attached with a fixed uh, member here. So you can see it's always at, at a specific thing. What we're going to do is we're going to take this fixed member out. We're going to put pistons in the middle so we can actually move the end piece around. And theoretically we should be able to move this left and like, you know, displace it X and Y. Not in and out because, you know, the, it's fixed axle lengths. But we should be able to displace this up and down and left and right. And it should be able to still rotate without losing any velocity. It's kind of like a CV joint that does, uh, you know, weird stuff. Anyways, it was apparently done by some guy named Schmidt. Um, NASA commissioned, commissioned Rich, Richard Schmidt of uh, Madison, Alabama. So apparently, you know, he's the guy who came up with this idea or, or this mechanism. Anyway, so we're going to take this off and we have to move this somehow. You'll notice too, this is kind of a little bit annoying with gear blocks. You'll probably be like, why can't you just connect this straight? We have to do basically the little sort of bridging connection thing, which is why these are all pistons. They're all just set to be like extremely strong. Um, so they don't actually move or anything and they don't have any controls. But yeah, unfortunately, because of the way gear blocks works, these are actually at like a 120 degree angle. So this whole grid is offset. So you can see it always extends the piece out here. I spent so long trying to figure out how to connect to just a straight beam up like these little straight black beams are. And I, I don't know. If, if someone knows, let me know in the comments down below because this was, I just was like, you know what? I just have to node bridge. And basically you can do that with a, there, there's a whole tutorial on the Gearbox uh, Discord. But these are all the script mods that the dev made. And there's a way to do, you know, angled suspension, angled pistons, stuff like that. So that's what we have to do here. And that way when it unfreezes, you can see, you know, well, look at this. This is cool. It actually still, it still works. See, it's hanging and see, it still rotates. That's so cool. Anyway, all right, let's fix this up. So, let's just move this pin out of the way. Um, we need to bring this out with a beam, which isn't a big deal like that. We're going to bring this back. Um, we need a piston. We probably don't need to go... I think we're at full extension to the right because... I think this would be considered full extension because this is like the maximum distance this can possibly go. So if I tried to stretch this out any further, no matter what, it would have to come back to this point. I'm pretty sure that is correct. Because, like, this one in the middle is free-floating, the yellow one. The blue one, yeah, I think this is max extension to the right. So I think if we set up our piston with this is the max distance, which is, like, what, five, six blocks, maybe? 
It's not, it's not really that far, is it? Alright, I think that's good enough. Um, we're not gonna really get the full... Oh no, that's only gonna go back to the middle. No, we need, we need to go, we need to go twice as far. Never mind, I lied. This is not good enough. Alright, that's good enough. It's still not gonna be the full range of motion. We'd have to double stack pistons to get the full range of motion. But this should give us enough motion to, you know, see what's happening here. Um, so that'll go like that. That's fine. This piece will just probably have to rotate out. Whoops. Oh, that's cool. Didn't know you could do that. That's interesting. We'll go there. That'll go there. Turn that on. And then we'll put this on an axle. Probably gonna have to extend this axle. Yeah, it's got a clear... Doesn't really matter. I sort of made this a little bit there. One more out. There we go. Perfect. And then we'll put just uh, a, I don't know, a medium one on this. A large one, probably. Yeah, this is all, it's it's not really going to be, yeah, no, okay, that's too much. It's not going to be the full range of motion. Like I said, we'd have to double stack pistons and really, you know, I'm just trying to see if this works. Again, this was not the original thing I've been working on in Gearblocks. I have been, you'll notice I probably haven't posted a video in Gearblocks in a couple days. Uh, that's because I have been trying to work on some stuff. I, lo I love that. Okay, well, that's just that. Anyway, yeah, I've been working on some stuff. Um, so I haven't, haven't really posted a video in a couple days, uh, in a, in a bit, on Gearbox. Hence, hence what we're doing now. But, you know, again, I was just working on other things, and then I came across this LEGO video, and I was like, you know what, that's kind of cool. I like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on that. Um, there probably is a way easier way to attach this than what I'm doing, but anyway, this is just sort of a stupid bridge. It doesn't really matter anyway, we're just trying to move this around, so there we go, let's put that there. Yeah, now that's, that's, <laughs> that seems like a little bit silly, but anyway, all right, let's turn that on. So this'll be, I don't know, let's go like you and I, uh, max speed zero, max four, sure. Something like that, done. And then this one, can be uh, J and K, right below you and I there. Max speed and max force. Okay, so then on, on, unfreeze. Oh, on. There we go. So now if I go U, it goes up. Okay, hold on. Let's uh, let's turn this on. So if I go toggle, yes. So you're rotating. U goes up. I goes down. It still stays in rotation. Oh, oh. Oh, hello. Oh, you know what? I bet you I'm over-rotating. I bet you we're stretching it too far. We gotta, we gotta, oh, no, we gotta come in. Yeah. Okay, that's so cool. I did not think it would do that. What? It doesn't, oh my, okay. Oh, no, it makes sense because they're fixed length links. The links can't contract, so it would have to go at a 90 degree angle. Wait, if I keep going. This is weird. What? The yellow one goes in the weird... Wait, hold on. I bet you if I change the rotation in the other direction, does the yellow... Does it go on the other side? No, it, does it always push that way? Oh, yeah, no, I'm over-rotating it there. Let's go up. There we go. This is so cool. This is actually... Yeah, oh my good. The yellow one just goes wherever it feels like it needs to. That's so cool that this works. Okay, I, yeah, this is, this is actually super neat. I have no idea, like, I, I get it, NASA made it, so there's gotta be some, like, reason that NASA needed it on the moon or whatever, you know, some offset manipulation of, of an axle. I don't, I don't know what you would ever need this for. It's so cool, though. It is, it is, it is one of those mechanisms in engineering that just, it's just, that's just, yeah, like, look, the yellow one, look, you can, like, kind of control where it's going. Oh, and then it just does stuff like that. That's weird. Yeah. This is a cool... A cool little mechanism. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Yeah, like I said, not the original thing I've been working on uh, for the last little bit. But we're working on other stuff. But uh, yeah, would love to make something that launches projectiles in uh, in Gearblocks. That's that's a different project. But I came across this video and I was like, this is, this is super cool. I gotta make one of these. Because that's just, that's just neato. Like, I can't believe this works. It's so cool. 
There's got to be some mathematical formula. I'm sure the geniuses at NASA figured out some way for for to predict where the yellow one has to be at any point in time. Like, I think it, it's down here because gravity wants it to go down. But, yeah, that's that's really cool. And it's constant. It's a constant velocity. Like, it always has to be the same output velocity as the same input velocity. That's just the neatest thing. I'm assuming you could do this with four links as well. I'm assuming you do it with three because three is the smallest number of links that would be, you know, inherently stable in every dimension, right? Like, if you do it with two links, then there's a chance, I feel like, that the middle one could collapse because the links could go, you know, flush against each other. But if they're three, then they have to keep equidistant from each other, you know, at 120 degrees. It's always going to offset. Like, I'm sure you could do it with four, five, or six. Um, because it wouldn't matter, right? You could have more links. They should never interfere with each other. But I'm assuming they just do it with three because it's the fewest that still works. Dang, that's cool. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see y'all next time. I know it's a short video, but I mean, you know, it's, it's a pretty cool thing.